This is the Up Convergence, and we're here with Michael DiMartino with a conversation about the water dance. Hi, Michael. Hello, Elizabeth. Thanks for uh, you know, turning all the knobs, pushing, pushing all the buttons, doing all the homework, <laughs> and to uh, help uh, this connectivity happen. Excellent. Water always finds a way to connect with itself, doesn't it? Continuously. Can't do anything else. It wouldn't be water if it was not connecting to itself. Yeah, and in these time of earth changes, every element is doing its job to uh, help in the um, purification, let's say, of the human condition so that we can all evolve to a higher level of uh, understanding and honoring our connectivity and our relationship with these elements and with each other. Yeah, and coming back into balance, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be painful for a lot of people, but definitely yes. <laughs> so tell me about so, the water dance. Well, I appreciate to have this time. And uh, as many of you might have seen, we just uh, showed the water dance video. And it was really, um, well, let's do this. Before we do that, let's just take a, a moment, close our eyes and just kind of, uh, hmm. get, kind of become coherent and, and spiritually tune in. Of course, water has many different aspects and uh, everything from, uh, you know, the biological and the scientific all the way through to the spiritual. So I'm going to invite you watching this video to just take a moment with your eyes closed just to, uh, drop into the sound of, of water as we begin our short time together here. Just like to do that, kind of get the flow started here. Okay. All right. Oh, so water dance. Um, <laughs> ooh, I like that. You're part mermaid now too. Um, well, water dance really came out of uh, a project I've been working on for the last couple of years uh, called the Water Protector Tour. And when people hear the name Water Protector, uh, of course, they instantly equate it potentially with Standing Rock and how that uh, verbiage was made more known to the mainstream. But it really goes back even more ancient than that to the original, uh, to the indigenous and aboriginal water protectors um, from many cultures all over the world. Most of us live here uh, on Turtle Island, of course, will know the water protectors here. But uh, all over the world, people have stewarded their resources uh, for thousands of years successfully. And all, only over the last uh, couple hundred years with uh, colonialization and industrialization have we really started to um, dance, destroy that uh, delicate balance between human beings and, and water. So um, particularly right now, because I, I think it's very important to uh, think globally and act locally, that we started the water protector tour as a way to bring awareness to all the various issues that are happening in our watershed, which is from uh, the glacial waters of Mount Shasta uh, on the Oregon border, all the way through uh, the coast range and the, and the Sierras through Central Valley, all the way to Sacramento, where the Sacramento River turns into the Sacramento River Delta, one of the largest uh, multi-channel waterways really in the world, over a thousand miles of waterways that pour out into the San Francisco Bay. So we've been raising a lot of awareness about um, what water protection means. And of course it means something slightly different for everybody, but we've tried to kind of 
encapsulate uh, a unified strategy of protecting our water around things like uh, environmental toxins, um, mismanagement, uh, and, and all the various things that are actually really damaging uh, water and, and destroying the delicate balance of, of human health and, and of wildlife and, and of our environment. So water dance really grew out of the need to, to focus uh, our efforts also on the spiritual uh, aspects of water. So what, is, what does that mean to you? The spiritual Along the, aspects. <laughs> it, yeah. it, it runs deep. Runs, I mean, you know, we're gonna, everything water, it runs deep like water. And of course, uh, I love on the, on the page, we had the, the picture of the winking whale because of course, the whale is the, uh, the ancient record keeper who goes to the depths of, of the ocean and uh, has a very special spiritual function. But um, as a musician, as an artist, or what I would say an artivist, an activist who's also an artist and trying to find creative ways to introduce solutions to people and also ways for people to unify. You know, we live in such a divisive time right now where everybody um, wants to and needs to have their voice be heard in, in a true holistic uh, democracy. But uh, in doing that, a lot of people are taking very polarized and oppositional. I'm for this, but you're for that. And so I, Felt it was really important not only because water does primarily unify us and and nourish i i felt it was important to find a way to um distill down uh through a reverse osmosis no <laughs> to distill down um a um a spiritual expression of of water and a way for people to relate to water i am also an interfaith minister i've, I've spent years studying uh, world religions and philosophy and psychology and metaphysics. So um, I have this fascination about how these systems reflect aspects of the human condition. So what we did is we looked towards many different uh, cultures and traditions to find out symbols that they used for water, right? Or um, uh, things like sign language, what's, what was used in cultural dance, whether it be uh, African or Polynesian, and to try to come up with a unifying uh, moving meditation that people could do as a spiritual practice to connect with water uh, and its different attributes, but also to connect with each other. So we, we created a video, which we uh, will again pre preceded and will we'll end um, after this part of this discussion people can actually learn it and and do it and participate with the dance for water but uh, more importantly too is also a way that people can uh, synchronize and align our prayers and our efforts towards helping to uh, connect with the consciousness uh, of water like if you're familiar with dr emoto um, that really you know the biology of life does reflect does uh reflect and interact in a symbiotic with our feelings and thoughts and our emotions. I, I think that, I think there's something I think there's something wrong with the connection. I can't hear you right now. All right. Um, is that better? How I, I can. Thank you. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit about your process, um, sort of how long did it take? Did you work with other people? Did, was it just a, a vision that came and there it was, or did you piece it together, or, um, in terms of the movements that are in the, in the video that we'll see again? Right. Um, well, actually all the above. And, um, uh, just to rewind for a couple of years, uh, on one of my, uh, journeys to Mount Shasta, uh, where I was able to uh, be at the headwaters, kind of standing in the headwaters, which if you've never been to is an incredible spot where, you know, water flows out from underneath of Mount Shasta from the, the glacial melt and uh, begins its journey all the way to San Francisco Bay. Well, when I was there... As a full-blown river, 
I mean, it comes out of the mountain as a river. <laughs> no little trickling, little, you know, gathering in little pools. It comes out as a river. <laughs> uh, it's really fascinating. And of course, that connects with the idea of, of groundwater. And of course, Mount Shasta is a volcano. So there's really miles and miles of underground lava tubes and, and riverways. And that happens to be a point where uh, the water gives herself and comes out in a, in a flow to help create the Sacramento River. Of course, joins with the other um, tributaries to help you know form the mighty Sacramento, which at its fullest strength as you get down into Redding and uh, of course down to Sacramento. Um, but on that journey, as I was at the headwaters, the, the, the water said to me, will you be champion? Will you, be, will you be a protector for me? Will you make a stand and give people the message that I'd like to share? And, and mind you now, I'm an interfaith minister. I, I, I don't drink. I'm not one who imbibes in, uh, you know, substances that can greatly alter my conscience. So um, it really happened just through the simple nature of kind of dropping in what I would call more the divine feminine, the more receptive part of our spirituality. You know, typically in patriarchy, we, you know, we want to control everything and we know everything and we operate from the mind, but <laughs> we drop into a deeper state yeah. of, of receptivity and what they call coherence. Uh, amazing things can happen. We can actually see and hear things that aren't typically accessible. So the river asked me to um, help to initiate this water protector tour. And then as through doing the tour, I just realized that it was important to have a way besides talking and, and just using our brains to communicate that we really needed something to um, s inspire people's hearts. Like, like Ram Dass said, uh, the greatest institution of social change occurs in the human heart. Mm -hmm. So as things went on and more and more people talked and more and more information and more and more science, I, I really felt like, okay, these are all powerful tools uh, and understandings about water protection, but unless people can feel it and feel that connection, uh, it really just becomes more and more, you know, information saturation. It doesn't necessarily um, inspire people to become an advocate or a an, an activist or a water protector. Yeah, just um, there's a lot of noise, um, and and for me it's it's um, it's how do you listen underneath you know deeper than the noise, and um, it's challenging sometimes you know. A lifetime practice, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lifetime practice for sure. Um, but you know, I, I also have gotten messages from water and you know, for a long time, I'd say, water told me this, water told me that. And it's like, what? And so um, I just know it didn't come from my own brain, you know, or maybe it came from my heart, right? But there, it was something that landed as a, as a full blown message that's really taken me years to fully unpack. And, and it's, I find that these little droplets that have been coming from water are now connecting up to others like yours, you know, that, that it's, it's, it's something, something much deeper happening than, uh, than I think we really understand that we, that we really have the capacity to understand. Um, so I'm excited and, and I think movement and dance is is a key part of that. And music. And, and you know, nature has a, uh, a very ancient and, and divine uh, intelligence. And, um, you know, in our world, we try to recreate or manipulate some of that. And I think that's why we're actually suffering so much right now, because it, it's been a uh, a design that's not in alignment with nature. I'm also a permaculture designer and everything we try to do with permaculture is about working in collaboration and conspiring with nature, not trying to manipulate uh, nature, but working through these natural systems, exactly. Yeah, and and there's a certain, um, uh, I suppose, arrogance of, of thinking that we're smarter, right? That we're smarter than nature and 
how could that be? I mean, we're, we're such a young species that how could we be smarter than an intelligence that has created creation for eons for forever and continues and will continue you know, long, long beyond us. Um, yeah, and, and that um, uh, we, we have the delusion that we're, we're separate from nature, you know, that, that, we're, that we're not a species that is completely reliant on the rest of nature to exist. It's a, it's, it's, there's a certain um, warped thinking that we need to decontaminate our species from. And I think just the simple movements, I, I did the, as I was playing the video, I, I, I played it several times and, and did the movements over and over again. And, and they're very, um, they're very potent. They're very simple, but very, very potent. And, and that was really the idea, you know, again, this is not something I, um, I just created, this was really a collaboration and it really evolved over a year and a half. We kind of let the movements come to us. Uh, and what we realized is that every time a movement came, it emulated some attribute of water. Mm -hmm. So whether it was rain falling, whether it was the waves of the ocean, right? Uh, whether it was giving from the water vessel, offering back to the water, because again, so much in nature, we take, we take, we take, and we never really sometimes, well, many people, not all of us, um, don't take time to acknowledge uh, the element or even the process of how that came to us. Even with water, we turn on our tap, we get a glass of water, we drink it, that's it. People actually don't think about those droplets water and the long journey that they make um, and also how they've been processed to to come to our tap so there's there's been this very colonialized uh, disconnection because many of us if we go back to our traditional cultures whether it's um, Celtic uh, whether it's African uh, Middle Eastern uh, East Indian uh, South American um, you know, we all have some level of indigenous connection with our ancestral land and the way that we uh, stewarded and worked in relationship uh, with nature. So it's it's not a new idea, it's certainly not new age. Um, it's something I think that people are starting to realize because the breaking down of these systems that's more important to, uh, to remember. So all of these movements came over a uh, period of time. And what we're doing now uh, we shot one video in a green screen room with uh, an incredible visionary artist. And uh, we also shot some in Deer Creek, okay. uh, one of the original creeks where they actually found gold, uh, which began the westward expansion. And at one point, more people lived in Nevada County than in San Francisco Bay Area because everyone came here to, to get wealthy on the gold rush. Well, that site is where really the the colonialization, and, and again, I don't want to get too dark here, but really the, the genocide of so many uh, of the native people in this area began to happen. Um, so we thought it was a very appropriate place to actually do the water dance as a prayer for water to help kind of do a pono pono and to have some sort of spiritual um, reconciliation with water with the environment and and maybe any of our ancestors that might have even participated in that horrific mm -hmm. uh, lost chapter of human history and, and coincidentally when we got to the spot was also the location of the nid intake uh manifold and for many of you who might not know nevada county because of the gold rush has over 450 miles of irrigation ditches um, that runs through the mountains of how we move water down from the snow melts up at Donner Summit in the Lake Tahoe area across the, the uh, peaks of the Sierras down into the lower uh, foothill areas. And um, there's some big issues there about the use of uh, herbicide, particularly Roundup, and also the adding of algicides, things like cutrine and copper-based heavy metals that is contaminating the water and poisoning our community. So it was, it was a strangely somehow divinely guided process of where we decided to do uh, the video shoot actually standing in Deer Creek with the sound of the water 
and uh, we'll be releasing that video soon. But more than what we're doing is we're doing this as a way to get people to do the water dance uh, wherever you are um, as a globally connected spiritual practice that can start to, like you said, unify all of our water drops and our positive intentions, connecting with the consciousness of water. And we're inviting people to actually use the audio track or, or not, but you can use a very simple auto, audio track of a heartbeat and the sound of water. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not a crazy wild, uh, you know, spiritual dance. Uh, oh. <laughs> not a Kundalini <laughs> dance. <laughs> and uh, we would love to get even uh, people's videos of them doing the water dance all over the world so we can aggregate uh, all of these visual inspiring images. And, and people can do that through the water protector tour uh, at gmail.com. Uh, and next year for World Water Day, we're going to initiate the water dance as a, we're gonna invite people to do it at the same time all over the world as we can, again, like you said, start to con connect our little drops of water in our consciousnesses. Yeah. Um, I, I, I know there's a couple of, of groups that are, that already have water dances going on a global level. I, I participated in one last year um, and filmed uh, a group of dancers on the Bear River. And um, and that was beautiful. And it was sent out all, all around the world. And um, I'll, I'll give you those links. But um, yeah, I think part of part of um, sort of the topic of this and and um, really something that's been on my mind quite a bit is how do we move from our inspiration into the actualization and the implementation of what we need to do as this seemingly complex um, social structure that is falling, right? So, so not only is it immensely complex and entrenched, it's also decaying and, and makes that level of chaos that much more well again I look to uh, and again i want to acknowledge what you just said because there are many types of water dances and water songs all over the world um but um I know there's a lot of sensitivity about um different cultures feeling like their traditions are being co-opted so i tried to create something uh new paradigm incorporate these where it's not like I'm going to do and go and do a, uh, you know, a water dance from this tradition and, and all the sensitivities that come up with that. Mm -hmm. So this is really a, a very new paradigm fusion of a, a lot of things, but there are many water dances and water songs. And we're going to explore that uh, in the next what day or two when we, I think tomorrow night when we do our dance for water, which is just going to be a couple hours of water related music and get people, you know, we got to get in our bodies. We have to get integrated. I know right now with the COVID, a lot of people are quarantined and locked down and feeling oppressed and shut down here on the West coast, all the fires, people don't go outside. So of course movement is a great way to uh, transmutate and transform density. So I think part of the, you know, the conceptualization to actualization um, is about, uh, really connectivity and we can do that through the technology right now as frustrating as it can be um, it's still a great resource uh, years ago really quick in 1994 i did a thing called drums around the world and it was have people all over the world drumming at the same time oh wow full heart rhythm uh we decided to do that out at the grand canyon which here for north america america or turtle island is really the the yoni it's like the birthplace of humanity. It's the location of the Sepapu, uh, the Hopi, and many of the Pueblo culture, cultures call that the womb of origination. And even from space, it, it does look like, you know, a, um, a, a, a yoni, uh, a birth canal for the planet. So we went there. We had uh, about 25,000 people showed up. We promoted it for a year. We brought in drummers from all over the world, including people like Hamza al-Din from Egypt and Baba Tunde Olatunji and indigenous drummers. We brought in different representatives of uh, tribes, people like Phil Lang from the Lakota. And uh, we did drums around the world. It, it, 
it just so happened on that day, which was August 22nd, 1994, it was also the day of the birth of Miracle, which was the first of now many white buffaloes. Oh my goodness. So, um, you know, the white buffalo return, symbolizes the return of the divine feminine and the emergence of these rainbow sun dancers uh, and people starting to come back to a, a, a spiritually unified uh, path to help restore the sacred hoop. So that was amazing. So, so part, part of what I would like to do, and I'm really focused on through this artivism, water protection for is starting to really get this coherence practice out because uh um we can do a lot through communication and and networking and stuff but really getting people uh spiritually uh to drop in together to share a, a resonant field and to share this coherence because really there, there's a there's a spiritual war going on right now and um uh, a lot of that is uh spiritual war against ideologies, uh, against between religions, between political parties, um, and even against nature itself and Sorry. against people. I think that this is a really uh, powerful way to very simply, without being political, um, that's a real hot topic these days, to, to create more unity and connectivity uh, with people from all over the world, even if they don't, you know, Sometimes languages can be a barrier of communication, but if we can get people to drop into these, this um, moving meditation, globally coherent practice for water, using again, you know, various uh, universal symbols like sign language, Mayan symbols, different uh, types of things, emulating the attributes of water, of rain, of waterfalls, of rivers, it's a way to uh, connect with water and connect. Uh, with each other so we're just uh the head of the baby is just starting to breach and give birth to this uh vision which is really exciting because it keeps me inspired to do all the nitty-gritty uh detailed stuff that is part of being a water protector like being educated about water science and hydrology and groundwater right. and right. environmental toxins and all, all that really sexy juicy science <laughs> science stuff <laughs> well even even more than that um for me and in, in my journey i've i've tried to reduce the noise as I said before and and find the the cleanest line right I, I grew up as a skier and you look for that clean line that's going to get you through all the obstacles and you have to point positive you can't you can't point to the rocks because you're going to hit the rocks if you right and and, and river rafting is the same thing you have to point and and keep your focus on on that clean line and um to me you know, we, we are in a very chaotic time, very complicated time. And yet I believe that by aligning with water, which is our source, which is what that dance is doing, it's, it's giving us a physical alignment with water that we can then take into our heart and into our spirit. We're aligning with source. So, so you know, how can we, how can we not reach critical mass in a, you know, with, with a simple practice like this, because really it, it's, it's these simple keys that are hiding in plain sight that I think um, are going to be able to thread the, the eye of the needle um, and, and, and bring this evolution of, of our species. And, and I would say that we're, we're, we're not even in the birth canal yet. I think we're just beginning to form the heart of humanity, as I say, with those imaginal cells that are, are just starting to beat in a, in, in, a sync, in, a, in a synchronized pattern that begin to form the heart. Um, you know, I think we're, we're creating a new species, really. Definitely. And uh, yeah, a great, great word, imaginal cells, because like when a caterpillar goes in the chrysalis, it doesn't know what's going to happen and it's going to come out as a butterfly. And that those actual cells, they molecularly change. And you're so right. We're going through a big uh, transformation right now. Like like the Hopi elders I worked with, they call it the, uh, the we're, in, we're going from a time of Koyanis Katsi, a world out of balance to a time of earth changes, of 
vape purification. Um, so many signs that that's happening. And again, all of these elements, water, also air, a lot of the hurricanes that are happening, fires. I mean, that's self explanatory. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's just the water cycle trying reaching for balance. It's trying to regain, you know, find balance again. And, and things are dynamic when they're moving, you know, it's, it, when things are out of balance, it needs a, it's, it needs a, dy, a, a dynamic uh, movement to, to bring it back to balance. Um, and, and like you said, a lot of, even though this call hasn't been so focused, there's a lot of new technologies and things that people are finding out about that can actually help with the, uh, you know, the reality of helping whether, you know, water purification or desalinization, like some of these different things that people are looking at as far as um, technologies that can assist us, but everybody comes down to our personal responsibility to, to be a conscious mm -hmm. steward. Yeah, from the inside. Right. How are we doing time? Uh, we've been going for um, 40 minutes. Shall we close it up here? Uh, so let me see. It, ideally, if we're going to, if we start the, our time with the water dance, which is approximately seven minutes and end with it, that's 14 minutes. So um, seems like we have like another five minutes. Maybe, maybe we'll uh, flow into um, the next thing we're doing. And again, I want to commend you for all that you're helping to facilitate and organize. This is not an easy task. Thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> your devotion. Right. Uh, speak. Yeah, I'm. I am. I am devoted. I am devoted to water. I call myself a water faithful. Like kind water. of a, a a whole concentric beyond uh, activist. <laughs> yeah, going above and beyond. Yeah. But, so I, I want to invite people, and again, it's been really exciting to connect with you because you're also in the same watershed. Um, for people who might not know, a watershed is wherever a drop of rain falls or snow falls, precipitation falls, wherever those uh, basically move into, uh, again, from the tips of the tight peaks of the Sierras and the coast range to the top of the glacial peaks of Mount Shasta, wherever that water gathers and congregates. Uh, so I really applaud you with your uh, watershed wisdom uh, council idea. I think it's a great way to start activating people. We're definitely uh, been working to try to do that here in our region. We'll continue to do so. Uh, if people would like more information, we have a couple of very practical, you know, I don't want to be so esoteric that we're not grounding this. Um, and, uh, I need to justify all these years of work somehow too. So, <laughs> you know, well, uh, and, and we both lived long enough to see a lot of movements uh, rise and fall, right? it because they have not paid attention to the practical aspects so i'm i'm very much about um uh, bringing it into tangible practical repeatable scalable actions that we can that we can um connect and network around the world so that's that's the idea of the watershed uh, wisdom councils and and standing on the on the edge of our water you know in our water as you say you know right in the water and and make that connection. Wait in the water. All right. Well, we're get, we'll get to the musical part of the program tomorrow. And uh, but I, I do want to uh, mention, you know, we, we're creating a template here, collaborating with you. Um, you can check out the Sacramento River Watershed Project and some of the projects we are doing, which includes a couple documentary films. One about the horrific Delta Tunnel proposal to drain 60% of the water out of the Sacramento River to send it uh, down through San Joaquin Valley for development and uh, in inappropriate and archaic agricultural practices. Uh, also what's happening with NID, uh, basically poisoning our water and our community. And of course, things like what's happening up on Mount Shasta with uh, the bottling plants pulling out over a half billion bottles of water a day. So really our water is under attack and we're trying to get people um inspired and, and, and activated to peacefully uh put a line in the sand and say that you know this is not 
acceptable for our community. So you can check out Sacramento River Watershed Project. Uh, uh, also the tour has been going for about a year and a half and we, we go all throughout the watershed in the bioregion. That's waterprotectortour.org. And uh, we have a lot of exciting events coming up. We're gonna be doing in the spring a water palooza, which will be an edutaining event. It'll be education, but also entertaining as they uh, stand against the Delta tunnels uh, in the Sacramento area and lots of other lots of other fun stuff. I will be going up to Mount Shasta on September 26 also, um, just to join others who want to gather at the headwaters to uh, uh, make a spiritual stand and to bring more awareness of what's happening with the waters there. So, um, and lastly, we, we have a great network throughout the region of how do people can connect and you can ch check out the source directory. Yeah. Dot org. And again, that's a template that we are open to sharing with people because again, um, the whole idea of, of, of competition against collaboration, it's like that's old paradigm. We have to start sharing resources and, and connectivity and, 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 and networking. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll make available these links um, in, in, the, in the, where this is posted, um, but you, you, you brought up a, a very important part of, of how under siege the Sacramento um, River is that watershed from from ridge to reef. You know, it's it's and and every watershed ends up in the ocean. Like we all end up in the ocean eventually, and and um, and really, wa water is under siege all over the planet. Every single every single water body is under stress and um we just have to recognize that 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 is unsustainable that's that's when things start to to snap right <laughs> is when there's too too much pressure then it will snap and so we have to find our way to ease that in in collaboration together we're all in this together and well, I stop using we're contributing far too many microplastics to our own health and our environment and to the seas and to the riverways. Yeah. Uh, if you have pharmaceuticals that need to be disposed, do it properly. Don't poison our watershed with that. Uh, stop using uh, inorganic herbicides and pesticides, insecticides, because not only is it poisoning our water, but it's killing off our pollinators that actually are the ones that pollinate our food supply. So, um, you know, not to be an alarmist, but this is really uh, red alert on planet Earth. Like, wake up and, and you know, it's not about being countercultural or being a granola person or a tree hugger. It, it's, it's about doing what's safe, and what's sane. Like, if you care about your family and your children and your children's children, there is absolutely no excuse to not take an active part in being the change that we need to see right now. And again, this isn't anything new. If we look back towards many um, indigenous cultures, they lived non-toxic um, lifestyles um, for, for thousands of years. So. Well, um, I, I, I say that, go ahead, sorry, finish. Go ahead. I, I want to just close with a little uh, musical meditation, okay. kind of get us smart, but I, um, I please. Yeah, you just to to me the 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 term indigenous to means me means that we remember, right? That we are all indigenous to earth. We are all indigenous to the water, and we we have to start repairing our our relationship with our water because um, this is source and it is it is our primary. I mean, it's our primary relationship, and we need to cherish water as if life depends on it, because it does, right? <laughs> Watershed wisdom from Elizabeth, our, our, our water swami mommy. <laughs> I'm, I'm the, the Yuba mama. Go. All right, play us some. And, and if, if you're watching this, you know, this up convergence is just going to keep going. So, you know, keep, keep tuning in and, and keep coming back and, and finding more, uh, more wisdom coming from all over the planet. It's pretty amazing. So really is and again thank you for your dedication and investing your sacred time and life force into such a great cause and uh, 
really appreciate and respect you and uh mm, thank you yeah and let's get her done <laughs> that okay I can hear it great good so I'm just gonna do a little improv I'm just gonna listen to listen to the wind in the water and see what, what what they have to say today so beautiful you to keep playing while this is running I'm sharing screen now there you go
Thanks for all you do. Oh, my hey guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. Didn't catch it in time. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for all you do. I'm sure you can hear me, but I had to turn the volume down so I can find where that one's playing. Kicked me off screen. Uh, anyway. Is that Earthstock? Um, I think that was Earthstock. There, no, I don't know. So um, I'm just going to close it out here. And thank you so much, Michael, for taking your sacred time to to be with us. It's been an honor. It's been fun. We're going to keep the conversation going. Yeah, and, we're, we're uh, going to get into. We'll we'll make this available and post it on on the Watershed Wisdom Facebook um, page. So search Watershed Wisdom Councils and you'll find us. Thank you so much.